Welcome to today's tutorial, we will be learning about module techniques and learning vscript functions in game. What is modular programming? It's the ability to split programs or classes into subprograms, which can be reused throughout the program or class if given specific access. The benefits to this is that you can reuse the code over and over again. This means that you don't need to retype the whole code out each time you want to use it. It's easier in maintenance as you only need to fix that procedure and not the whole code. So if you change the code in one section, it won't be the same as the other section. But with modular programming, once you change the modular, it changes the whole thing in one procedure or function. It's used mostly in object-oriented programming, program languages like C Sharp and Java, and can be used in C++, and it's not usable in normal C language, as that is not an object-oriented program. You also have the ability to add parameters to the procedures or functions. This is handy and you don't need the same output each time. So you can make it different but you still use the same procedure or function. Here's an example in Haggis, a reference language that you should have known from the last tutorial. So we create a variable that's a real that is called price which has two decimal places after the dot. Then we want to have access from the keyboard. So the person will type in the price that they want. Then we do online validation, check if the price is more than five. If so, we create a new variable called output and we times that by two. Then we display out and display how much. And if it's not above five, then we times it by one and a half. Then we display it out. Before I go to the next slide, can you find a pattern? This doesn't mean it has to be the same amount of lines. It just means that it's a recurrent pattern. Is right here. Although those two are different, they both almost replicate the same pattern. So we can change this into a function or procedure in modular programming. Here's the same thing but as a procedure. We call the procedure get price with a parameter for real with price. In programming languages, this would be a double or a float. In Haggis, you don't have those data types as it's called a real. You don't need to learn this unless you want to learn reference languages. The thing that's highlighted green is the same as the one from the left hand side. And notice as now, we only need to change the output and we need to declare once. You can do this as well, but it's good practice. And notice as there's only one send command compared to two send commands. You can do this without modular programming as well. Using modular programming, we reduce our code by 66%. This makes no improvements to the code itself, but it makes it easier for us to read. A procedure is a subprogram which doesn't return a file back. It's used if you want to execute lines by lines and you don't really want to care about if a value should be returned back. A function is a subprogram which returns a value back signed by a variable. It uses the word return to return a value back. You also don't need to turn back a value to a variable, you can just call it by itself. One to the left is a procedure, the ones from two slides ago, and one to the right is a function. Notice as we call the function and we have to return back a value. This is very important. Then instead of doing set output, you don't need to do that as you're only caring about returning back a value. So we can just put in return price times two or return price times one and a half. Now we will learn about global and local variables. These two are very important in all programming language you will ever learn. If given access dependent on the access modifier, any class in the program can access this value. A local variable can only access inside a procedure or a function, and it gets destroyed once it hits the end or when the value is returned. A local variable is declared inside a procedure or a function. The variable is stored in a stack, and the stack gets destroyed once finished. It doesn't get destroyed technically, but it gets restricted back to its normal state. And it's good for memory, as the value gets destroyed after use. So we don't take up too much memory on something that we don't need to store. And here's an example, we declare local var as object. So remember that local variables are declared inside a procedure or a function. A global variable is declared outside the procedure and functions, so it can be declared inside the body. 
You can use an assign access modifier, private or public, to restrict access. And this is something that you don't get with local variables, because local variables are just there for procedures or for something that has a short lifespan. Assigned elsewhere in memory, this is bad as too much global variables can take up space. Because remember, once you have a global variable, that global variable does not get out of memory or gets destroyed in memory until we finish the program entirely. So be careful when you use global variables. The other downside is any procedure or function can override it if given particular access modifiers. And this is really bad if you want the variable not to change. There is a specific keyword, but we won't need to know that for now. And notice as the global var is declared above the body and not inside the procedure. So this will not get destroyed until we finish the program completely. Here's a visual representation of what the stack does with local variables. So let's start the program. The first thing we do is we have to activate the procedure into memory. So we need to pass this through to the stack. So now we pass through the procedure that we want to input into memory. And we also carry over the parameters. The more parameters you have, the more heavy the memory it will be for the stack. So be careful that you don't declare a parameter and you don't use it, as this takes up lots of memory. Our next line, we create a string. And we assign it to nothing. Strings are immutable. This means if you change it, it has to be a new string in memory. This is very bad if you want to make concatenations with strings. So now we need to push this into the stack. Our next line, concatenate hello with name. So now we have to create a new string of greet and call it hello Bob. And notice as there's two greets because a string is immutable, which means that once we assign it, we have to create a new one above it. This is the downside of using a string. Now we have to call the display procedure and we send over greet as our input. So now we need to push the display method with the parameter greet. You don't need to know this, but the program doesn't keep the variable name as it's not necessary. So the program will assign it a random name. It doesn't matter what name as long as the program knows what it is. So we assign that to hello Bob as a string. Then we call the procedure with the computer's generated variable. Once we finish with that procedure, the whole procedure gets popped out of memory. Now we're at the end of our procedure. This means that now we can take up and free space of the stack. So now that's us finished that part of the stack. So that's what the stack looks like when you execute a procedure or function. So now let's get into Hammer and show you few script functions and how to use them. Now we're in Hammer. The idea of this tutorial is to use functions that's available in vScript to initialize in this game. So today, we're going to make a decoy which helps us to teleport depending on where it lands. This will be an exact copy from turn decoys into nukes. The first thing we need to do is to add a logic timer and name it. Then we're going to use a time interval where we fire. And then on the timer, we're going to run the script code think with no delay. This means that this code will be executed every one second once we load up in the game. Make sure that we have a logic script and specify what file you want to use it from. The next important thing is to name the player that you want this to reference. For example, you want a reference name. So I called it player main. Remember this, this becomes important. Now let's get into the code. So we create a global variable that is private for now. So only this class can access the global variable. We call it person. And then we use the entities find by name function 
we specify null and we want to look for player main. So this will execute normally once we load up the game. This will be our player. This is very important once you want to teleport them. Inside the think procedure, we create a local variable called int and we assign it null. So this would be an object. Then we do a while condition while int and we use the entities class again. Find by class name. We specify what we want to it be, so int, and we want to find what we want to find. So we want to find decoy projectile. So if there's a decoy projectile found, it will store it into int, which is the local variable that we cleared earlier on. And we want to make sure that that is not null. So we want to make sure that when we assign an int, that it's not null. So if it's alive. And if this is true, we want to keep doing a conditional check and make sure that the entity velocity, which is the speed, is equal to the factor of 0, 0, 0. So we want to check once the decoy has a speed of 0. If true, we want to grab its local origin. So basically, you want to grab where it is positioned in the world. The other conditional check checks if we do have something into person. This means we're checking if this is not null. So if person has been assigned successfully, we want to create an other local variable called pause. We assign it to set pause, the location of x, the location of y and the location of z. This command you can access from the console. Then we use that command and we send it to the console and we destroy the decoy grenade. And then we break out of the loop. And this loop will always be repeated every second. So now let's open the game and try it out. Now that's us loaded up. Let's select counter terrorist as this is player main. Let's put stop Let's one so our, our bot does not shoot us unexpectedly. Then we want to use buy anywhere one because we don't have a buy point in our map, so we can't buy anything. So now let's end the warm up. Let's go to our buy menu and let's buy a decoy. Let's go, let's go. When this decoy stops bouncing around and the velocity is zero zero zero, it will then spawn us to that location. So let's crouch, right click, let go, and as, as it teleports us to that location. Let's try this again. Let's throw it a little bit one. higher. Out. There we go. So we teleported where the decoy goes. The downside is there's no vscript function to allow us to teleport the player itself. So we do need to use the set post command. This can be bad if the decoy lands nearby here. And notice as the server is stuck until I no clip out. This is the downside. Unless you add collision here. You, se you seem to have issues with the location. So if you right click here, you spawn right at the hit rig of the terrorist. And this could be really bad. But assuming that your map doesn't have edges, it should be fine. So we are at the list of Counter Strike Global Offensive script functions. This gives us the amount of scripts that we can use within our vscript. We don't need to really care about the class name. We're only interested in the functions. For example, set origin. Take a note of the data type. A void is a procedure. This does not return anything back. Our parameter has to be a factor and it's only one parameter that we need to pass through. The is valid is a billion. So this is a function. It returns back a billion. And notice as it's parameterless, so we don't need to specify a parameter. And the get sound duration function is a float. And notice as there is a default 
parameter value. So this can be left null, or you can specify it if you don't want it to be nothing. So that's how you can use vscript in your scripts. And if you go a little bit more down, global functions. This is the print and smg function that we learned from the last one. We can do the show message, which can show a message to the screen of the player. Notice that this is also a void. So this is a procedure which you need to input a string data type. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next tutorial, but I might do some more vscript examples. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.